right guys, welcome back to episode two for the CR250 street slash supermoto build. First, I really wanna say thank you so much for all the support on episode one and episode 1.5. I did not expect 50,000 viewers plus, and it's still going. So really, thank you for enjoying the content. Um, thanks for commenting, and thanks for all the new subscribers. I, I really hope you stick around and uh, finish the rest of the series and check out some of the other videos that I have too uh, With racing and mopeds and just general nonsense for this episode. We're just gonna work on the CR250 lights, so I Went through kind of a bunch of different ideas with this um, I took a, a Tomo Streetmate light it's from a moped and try to work that into the CR250 and it just didn't look right then I bought some uh, Chinese rear light that was DOT approved and that didn't look so great. Really the problem is just the uh, rear fender on the CR250, it just, it's, it's way too motocross looking and it doesn't really fit in with the supermoto look. So we're going to remove that and remove the whole airbox assembly and work something from scratch. So I'm going to build a whole tail section for that. To work the actual lights, we're going to be using a battery setup. The reason why we're doing that is because I am holding out for an E-Line. Uh, the E-Line is kind of, it's, two th it's 200 watts power from the stator. And that's more than enough to power anything you'd ever want on the CR250. The problem is they're discontinued. So to find one, you have to find someone who's willing to sell you it. And they're not, they're not cheap. Uh, so I don't want to use the crappy 50 watt stators that are available on the market so I'm just gonna go with the battery anyway let's jump straight into this episode and get the lights going so here we are we have the bike all stripped down and I have to say I really like the look that this is giving off right now it's obviously not complete and I'm not sure if you can envision it the same way that I'm envisioning it but we're going to do something a little bit special with the headlight, um, where the number plate is, and probably shorten the forks down, get a uh, supermoto fender in the front, and going on with the rear, we'll probably drop the rear just a little bit. So we'll ch take, take off a couple of inches, maybe on the rear and in the front, probably one or two inches, and see what that gets us. For the tail section, we're just going to mock up... Uh, with cardboard exactly what it's gonna look like and I'm gonna do that in a whole nother episode but just giving you the idea right now of what it should look like all right so our kit from Polysport arrived today uh, even though I'm most likely not going to use this because I have some other ideas for our front headlight um, I thought it'd be a good idea to just try it on see exactly what it looked like and you know kind of get a idea of uh, what a supermoto would look like in person. Basically, if the headlight assembly that I'm thinking of doesn't work out, we're gonna use this. So that's pretty much our option. Uh, let's test this one out because this one's here now and the other one's still coming in shipping. So we'll see what this one looks like first. All right, so to remove our number plate, it's really just one screw. Unscrew that and get it out of the way. Easy peasy. We'll toss that to the side for now and get ready for the Polysport stuff. So the Polysport stuff has uh, rubber mountings and they're kind of a pain in the butt to get on. To put them on, the easiest way that I found was just spray a little bit of Windex and pull the tabs through with a set of pliers. Hopefully you don't pull them through too hard and rip them off. but. Once you get them in, they will snap into place just like this. And then you just twist it and you're done. And putting them on, you also want to use some Windex because this is this rubber is very, very sticky. So putting on some Windex onto the fork tubes and you should be able to just pull the tabs back into place. And here's what it looks like with everything on. Not too bad definitely going to have to add in a supermoto fender and drop the fork tubes just a little bit to get that nice aggressive stance. Now we're going to install the actual light and set that up. So you're going to want these 
things here. The polysport is actually a 9003 or H4 connector type. So the left side is for low beam, the top is for high beam, and the right is the ground. Uh, this is just for the main plug uh, light assembly. We're not going to actually be using that extra light that you see there, which is kind of like a daytime running light. Um, it's just too much to connect. So solder up some connections and get all the ground points set up. And I went through probably several different iterations of this light setup. So just in this part, uh, making sure that it's all working and set up properly, that the light is all good. Um, our battery assembly is actually working well and we're gonna actually set up a little tab mount tab for that battery so don't worry about the battery just being stuck there with tape it's it's only temporary all right so my order from Amazon came in today and we have our actuator light for the handlebar so we're gonna install that and you're probably been wondering how are we gonna actually actuate the rear light when we pull on the brakes so we can't use the stock OEM levers because they don't have this little piece. Now what this piece does is we're going to be using this lever first off. This is a Magura lever. Uh, pretty nice. And in the back of it, this uh, little lever has a button, or this little switch has a button. And the switch actually goes installed into the lever it just gets threaded in. This is standard for most motorcycle levers. And when you pull the lever, it disengages that switch on the inside. So you can't see it, but there's the switch in here, right here, the little button. This lever is pushing on the switch, so when you disengage it, it actuates the uh, circuit. So we'll be using that in conjunction with uh, with the whole system so that way we can do our rear brake light whenever we pull on the lever. Um, what also came in is the headlights. These are uh, pretty fancy, I have to say. It's got a little actuator inside here. That's what this cable is. So this cable actually makes it go uh, it's a little hard to see. Makes this little thing come up. So that's kind of like the high and low beam. And it's one of those lights where if it's straight on, it's kind of flat across. So really nice, but I'm not gonna install it on this episode at least. Um, so here's the bulb for it. And the reason why I'm not installing So blah, blah, blah. What it really boiled down to is the fact that I didn't realize that I needed a ballast for HID lights, and that's really all it is. Uh, I just didn't order one. We'll go through that in another episode, install the HID lights or the head lights, and get something super fancy going on, but for now we're just going to keep with the Polysport fairing. So to install the actual lever, we're going to have to remove our old lever and disassemble the throttle assembly. This kind of lever doesn't allow us to actually clip it on with the throttle still installed, so we're just going to have to take everything off and slip it on. And for the switch, I'm going to install that on the left side of the bike, on the left handlebar, and move everything else over, and tape everything up, zip tie it together, make sure it's nice and neat. So I went to my local motorcycle shop and asked them about what we can do for the rear brake light using the rear brake lever. So they sent me one of these things. This is a banjo bolt replacement. And what that is is the part that connects the actual uh, tube for the brake fluid to go through. That bolt that holds it together inside of the master cylinder, this gets replaced with this and when you push on the brake lever the actual uh, this actually triggers the switch inside of the banjo bolt so it's pretty nifty you have to make sure that you find one that actually fits your master cylinder and this one for the Nissan brakes it is a M10 with 1.25 
pitch for something like a Brembo or even the Magruder lovers that we're using for the front brake, that's a 10 millimeter by one millimeter pitch. So just be aware of that. Um, in hindsight, we could use both two of these, one for the stock front brake and one for the rear brake, the stock rear brake. But I'm gonna continue using the Magura Lover front brake because I kind of like that one a little bit better than the stock OEM Honda or Nissan brake master cylinder. Okay, so the wiring for the CR250 is fairly completed. Now, one final time, I know I keep repeating myself, but this is just a mock-up. Um, there are some things that I did here that I wouldn't 100% recommend, but I'm going to roll with it for right now, and you guys kind of just get the idea off of it. Um, if you're wiring an ignition stator, which has the uh, light coil and such, the process is pretty much the same. The only difference is I'm using a battery instead of wiring it straight to the stator. So our light, this is the, the red for the rear light, comes out for the brighter, like when you brake, the yellow is just the static brake uh, rear light, and the black is obviously the ground. So the ground is floated. The battery ground is also floated, so anything that wants that needs a ground can just go straight to the frame. And this red wire comes all the way up to our brake right here. So this is our brake switch. And the other lead coming out of the brake switch goes directly to the battery positive. Now, I put it this way so that way in case I don't act I don't turn on the lights or you know if something else fails in the light switch system, the light switch being this, uh, I can still have my brake light working. So this is always on as long as something in the lead coming out of straight out of the battery doesn't you know mess up or the ground doesn't mess up so that's always on now what's coming straight out from the battery so the battery wire is, this is all going through the frame underneath the tank so the battery wire is connected to the light switch the light switch then comes back out over here uh, to this black wire and that black wire is going into the high beam of the front light and is also split and that splitting is for just the static rear light so those two are in parallel the high beam for the front and the rear static light so let's turn it on see that that is all connected and if we still actuate our rear brake light it's all good so exactly how I want it um, the only thing I would change about this system is one I'm using all black wires and I did that because I personally don't want to have a colorful mess of wires just sticking out all over the place yes you can wrap them and I highly recommend that you do label your wires or color code them to make your life easier in the future but this is me this is my bike uh, but that's my recommendation color code and or label your wires also it's easier to get a uh, wire connection circuit board i don't know what they're called but you can kind of like splice in and out of wires i'll show a picture up here so you guys know what I'm talking about and I'm not going crazy. Um, but just to get the wires all organized and whatnot so you don't have to keep... Wow. So you don't have to keep uh, disconnecting, soldering, all that stuff. You just get the wires as they are and you can unscrew and screw them back in as you please. So let's check out the bike with everything all assembled and wrap up this episode. And there we have it. All of our lights are set up for the CR250. The rear is working just fine with the lights off and the front's working just fine with the lights off. And they work just fine with the lights on. 
our rear light statically is on and the front is off. So check out this cool little night shot that I did. You can kind of get a sense of how bright the lights are. They're not super, super bright, but good enough to get ourselves registered for the DMV in Arizona. If you have other recommendations and ideas for the CR250 or anything that you've done yourself, please leave a comment. Let me know. I'm really interested in seeing and hearing what you guys have to offer. All right, guys, this episode is finished, but we are still not done with the CR250. We've got the tail section to go through, the intake, the air filter, brake cables, and we're probably going to be revisiting the lights again anyway. So there's still a whole lot left to do on the bike, but I really hope you enjoyed this episode. Let me know what you guys think uh, by sending me a comment. I read all your feedback and take it to heart. So uh, give me some feedback guys and I'll see you guys in the next episode. We will be working on the tail section for sure. Let's get this bad boy done. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.